Okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit about a, a patch that I uploaded that's really uh, meant to contain some useful pages that could be imported to another patch. Uh, some time savers that I will use, but maybe you will use too. Um, with the beta firmware 1.07 and the upcoming firmware 1.08, which is a stable version of 1.07, uh, copying pages from one patch to another becomes a possibility with Zoya. And so this is meant to anticipate that change in procedural behavior. So the first page is really simple. It's just a bunch of UI buttons. If you're into pixel arts, UI buttons are great because uh, you can apply CV to them and they light up. If you apply more, they get brighter. If you apply less, they get dimmer, but they can also change colors. So for those of you who have aspirations to do some pixel art with uh, Zoya, which I heartily encourage, here you go. Whole grid full of UI buttons waiting for CV to come along and uh, make them into art. The next page... I should keep the page list open. It's called Option Buttons. So this allows you to select and deselect options in any order you want. Um, so you might want to select different channels uh, from an audio switch or different LF LFOs to use as a modulation source. Uh, this is a great one for doing that. This is probably the least plug and play page that I have here because, you know, this is set up for four options. You might have six or three. The limitation there really is uh, the number of channels that a switch can support, which is 16. And the way that this works is you just set up uh, the CV from each switch in ascending order so that it opens each switch of the, or each channel of the switch. And then you connect the output of each one to the trigger. So each one triggers the sample and hold. This is a sample and hold uh, at different values that correspond to each channel of the, the switch. So one, three, four, two. Um, and then there's, this is just a generic uh, switch used for example. Um, and you can put in you know, it can be an in switch, it can be an out switch, it can be audio, it can be CV, but it allows you to pick whatever order you want to select things in while deselecting the previous choice. So these could be different LFOs, they could be different sequencers, they could be different ADSR values, they could be different, you name it, uh, on the audio side, likewise. It could be a distortion, a delay, you know, different sources that go into a distortion or a delay. Uh, so, you might not have four options, but this short of, sort of shows you the framework for doing that if you want to take it apart and apply it to your specific needs. Uh, this one I, ca I called Bipolar Depth. Um, so basically the idea for this is that you've got some parameter that goes from zero to one. And use this... Uh, <coughs> value module, you bias the parameter to zero and you use this value module to control that, that parameter. Um, so just for an example, delay mix. Uh, you want to modulate the mix of a delay. And let's say that it's set to, to 2.95 already and you add an LFO to it. The LFO, you either need to take a lot of time to, to uh, adjust the signal strength so that the LFO doesn't overshoot one, creating, you know, uh, weird periods where it's not modulated, uh, which is time consuming. And then on top of that, if you change the parameter, if you decide, well, I want it to modulate from 0.15, uh, then suddenly you have to, to adjust all the connection strengths again. This takes that uh, out of it. What happens here is that the, the parameter goes into a CV invert, which goes into a value module biased to one. 
And what that does is provide a ceiling for our modulation. Uh, the modulation can't go any higher. This goes into a multiplier that sets a, a depth of sorts. Uh, and the modulation can't go any higher than 0.705, which is the, the inverse of 0.295 on the 0 to 1 uh, thing. So this LFO, it, suddenly it goes back and forth here. You don't have to calculate anything. Um, I called this one bipolar depth because I also included a depth control. And what happens there is that <coughs> the depth control also goes to the multiplier and in fact now we're not worried about uh, this point to one we're worried about this point to zero because it's a negative value with negative values it oscillates from whatever point the parameter is at uh, to to zero um, although you can adjust that so as you adjust up it's it's relative to that range provided by the parameter so in the negative condition, the parameter that's used to, to govern that is in fact our, our parameter value, which goes into this in switch. And when you cross over uh, into positive values, uh, it switches from using the parameter to the inverse and then starts applying positive range to it. Um, so basically the whole idea of this is that you can you know, modulate between this point and zero or this point that isn't quite zero or this point that isn't quite one, but what you won't do is go over things. Um, as this goes to negative one or to, to one, the absolute range is set by the parameter that you've already input. Um, and then this push button is just a simple on off which I think is nice particularly when you're using a depth control that ranges from negative one to one uh, you know adjusting that and fine-tuning it so that it's at zero and you aren't getting any modulation is kind of a pain in the butt so this one is called modulation feedback and it's essentially a simpler form of of the last one it uses the same uh, proposition it, it creates a, a, an inverse between zero and one. Um, and this is just, you know, if you aren't concerned about all of these points between your parameter and zero or one, what this does is allow you to modulate from your parameter to one or from your parameter to uh, zero. And when you want to switch back and forth between them, there's a push button that chooses up or down. Um, no depth control, nothing to worry about there. I've just thrown in an LFO as an example, but you can use any modulation source, source or multiple modulation sources uh, that you want. Uh, this is a one-shot LFO. Um, the button here is just acting as a, a trigger, but uh, anything can be a, a trigger in this case. Um, the timing on this is complicated. I'm not going to go through it, but if you're interested in, in how it's made, essentially it uses a, a ADSR without any uh, attack, decay, or release, which is something you're going to see come up again, uh, to create a sort of envelope around that one shot that then closes. You can see the LFO continues to modulate, but there's nothing to open up this multiplier and the output of the one-shot LFO would come from the multiplier. So this is an envelope follower gate. Uh, you'd attach audio. There's a, a audio gate here if you want to use that as a threshold. It goes into an envelope follower. The envelope follower goes into an ADSR with no attack, decay, or release and uh, with immediate release turned off. And, and what this does, uh, and that goes into a comparator, which is biased to 0 0.05. It has to be some number above uh, above zero, but it, it, it's pretty arbitrary what it is. Um, and essentially what this does is when you play a note or there's some incoming audio, 
it generates a continuous gate. Um, so you could use that to control an ADSR or uh, to open a switch or who knows what. There are a lot of different applications for it to advance a sequencer. They're, you know, I mean, um, but essentially as long as there's incoming audio, uh, this will stay high. The comparator will stay high and when it closes, it'll stay low. So it provides uh, steadier uh, CV for the, the uses of timed events than just using an envelope follower, which uh, rises and falls. Um, this is a probability gate. Uh, they're basically what a probability gate is, is it's a way for Zoya to flip a coin. Um, and you can determine how often that coin comes up heads or tails, but it's still going to flip it and sometimes it'll be heads and sometimes it'll be tails. So this uses, uh, I don't know why I called it that. This is, uses a, a, oh, percent, a value module to set, uh, the, the percentage. So this is set to 50. So right now what happens is every time this LFO cycles, which is our, our clock, but you can use anything as a clock and it doesn't have to be regularly timed. Uh, anytime you want a random decision to be made one way or the other, uh, you can use whatever you want going into a, a, a random module that has a new value on trigger uh, option. And this goes into the other side of our comparator and the comparator, each time there's a new value from the random module compares them. And so when this one is, when the random module is higher, the comparator's output is one. Uh, when this value module's value is higher, the comparator's output is zero. Um, no, I did that backwards. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, when this is higher than the, the random module, the output is one. Uh, when the random module's output is higher, this is, uh, the output is, is zero. Um, And I'm not quite sure why I put a multiplier in here. Oh, that's why. The other thing that, that you can do, uh, the reason why there's a multiplier in here is that you can provide a, a gated output. So this will, using this clock, will determine with every beat, yes or no. Um, so if you don't do that, th then the output will be Sometimes for a couple of beats, the output will be zero or one, but each time this this breaks uh, things up, every time the, the LFO goes to zero. So it, it can be a way for you to, to uh, put that into regularly spaced events. Um, so if you wanna, you know, generate random gates for, for a synth or a drum or, or whatever, um, if you just use this, then sometimes those notes might be, you know, uh, three or four clock cycles long. Um, this will provide an on and off that's tied to every uh, clock cycle, every beat. Okay. This is a looping envelope uh, with velocity. Um, so I tried to combine two things at, at once. Um, we have a, a MIDI note in here. The gate goes to our envelope. The velocity goes to a multiplier here that our envelope also goes to. And this is how you tie uh, velocity in the traditional sense. The, you know, if you play harder, it seems louder. This would go to a VCA uh, in a synth uh, patch. Um, and so as the velocity is higher then the output of the ADSR is also higher and the VCA opens up more as it's quieter, it's softer. Um, you can also loop this envelope and what happens then is, I'm going to press this button, um, <clears throat> then the attack and decay section become looped. It goes into a comparator and every time the comparator uh, falls back to zero, it sends a, another signal to uh, the input of the, the ADSR to, to recycle. And at the same time, uh, 
a signal is being sent to uh, the, the release and sustain values to suppress them, um, this uses a, a 50% connection between a, a zero, a, a negative one to one value module. So when this is at zero, um, this is at negative one and, and it suppresses those by sending a constant value of negative one. So even if, if you have some other connection to them that, that, you know, shapes the, the sustain to one, it'll bring it back down to zero. Then when this is pressed, our negative input on our comparator goes high and it breaks this cycle between the comparator and the, the ADR or the AD envelope. Uh, and it also, uh, what it does is since it's a 50% connection, it raises this up to zero, um, the output of this up to, to zero. So essentially it has no effect at this point on these values. So if you had the sustain at 50, it'll still be at 50. Okay. Uh, this is a bypass with trails, although I don't think I finished this. Oh, no, I did. Well, um, I just forgot that this is a pretty simple setup. Sorry, I got confused there for a second. So this is a stomp switch. Um, and essentially what it is is audio comes in here. When the first channel is selected, it passes all the way through. Uh, when the second channel is selected, I used a delay line as a random sort of stand-in module. It'll pass through the delay line, if you uh, press the stomp switch again and close this, it'll go back and pass audio through channel one, but any audio that's still passing through the delay line will continue, um, so you get trails. Uh, and then this and the delay line would be connected to the, to the next effect or the output or whatever is next in your signal chain. Uh, both of them would be. Okay. Uh, this is a, a bypass with a mix control. So what happens here is that we have an audio balance, uh, which has its mix controlled by uh, this value module. So you buy, bias the, the audio balance to zero. Um, and then you'd use this to control the mix uh, between your, your wet and dry signal. Um, and so when the, the stomp switch was active, this would be given a value of one, the mix would pass through and you'd have a mix of whatever you wanted. Um, and then if the, the, the stomp, if the stomp switch is is turned off again if it's unlatched then this goes to zero and so does the mix and whatever is passing through channel one is the only thing that you hear um so this is a when you press the stomp switch it's a mix of channel one and channel two using the, the balance um and we just have a, a buffer delay as a, a arbitrary stand-in uh and then this is the same idea, but with trails, so it works in reverse um, using a panner. So panners are prob probably pretty poorly named. Uh, I would think of them more as, I mean, they, they certainly can be used to pan. But left and right channel are kind of arbitrary. Left could be um, into delay and right could be dry. Um, so they're, they're really good for using for send effects. Um, it's sort of like an audio balance, but in reverse. And so the, the same thing works here. It's, it's like putting your, 
your channel, uh, your audio switch before uh, the choice of output so that you get trails. Um, this is our, our bypass signal and it just goes through and plays cleanly. And this is our, uh, our wet signal, which goes into a delay line, which I'm just using as, again, as a stand-in. We have the same setup with a, a mix uh, control going into a multiplier and a stomp switch. When you press the stomp switch, the mix becomes active and some of the audio gets sent to the delay. Um, when you unpress the stomp switch, it will go back to dry, but again, whatever is passing through the delay will continue to pass through the delay. So you'll get uh, trails. And then this is uh, a multi-effects version. So what I have here is a uh, three-channel switch that's controlled by a sequencer. And each of the, the notes of the sequencer are 0, 0.5, and 1, which will open up channel 1, channel 2, and channel 3 of the, the um, audio switch each time the stomp switch is, is pressed and cycles the sequencer. And then again, as just sort of arbitrary examples, I've put in a bit crusher on channel 2 and a delay line on channel 3, and each time you, you channel 1 would be bypass. Uh, and each time you, you press the stomp switch, it would cycle from channel 1 to channel 2 to channel 3. Uh, another thing that I often do in this scenario is, in fact, make this a four-step sequencer, where the fourth step is channel 2 again, so it functions kind of like a three-way toggle. So you have channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, channel 2, channel 1, channel 2, cha you know, so... Um, and that's just a, a personal choice that, you know, sometimes it, it makes it feel like it's easier to get from, from one point to another at any given time. Um, so yeah, those are, those are the pages. Uh, and I, I hope to do more of these. These are just some ones that, that either people ask about a lot, have asked about a lot, um, or that I use a lot. I use, you know, the, the envelope gate a lot. I use the probability gate a lot. I use the, the modulated feedback uh, things where the parameters are, are controlled an awful lot. Um, I'd like to do more pixel art, but all of my patches are just too darn CPU heavy. So anyhow, um, with, you know, page copying being a thing that's used in the beta where and, and in the next firmware, it'll be become much more widespread. I just thought I, I put some stuff out there that, that if you're already using 1.07 will be useful. If you're, you know, in the future when you up, upgrade to 1.08 also might be useful. Um, all right.